Welcome to Canadian Wing, Queen Victoria Hospital, East Grinstead. Queen Victoria Hospital is a specialist NHS hospital providing life-changing reconstructive surgery, burns care and rehabilitation services for people who have been injured or disfigured through accidents or disease. Our world-leading clinical teams provide specialist surgery and non-surgical treatment for people across the southeast and beyond. We specialise in conditions of the hand and the eyes, head and neck cancer and skin cancer, reconstructive breast surgery, maxillofacial surgery and prosthetics. We have two wards on Canadian Wing, Ross Tilly and Margaret Duncan. You may have been admitted for elective plan surgery or you may have been admitted unexpectedly as a trauma admission. This video is intended to prepare you for your stay on the ward and hopefully ease some of the anxiety that you might experience coming into hospital. A wide variety of healthcare professionals may be involved in your care at the hospital, including nurses, doctors, therapists, healthcare assistants, pharmacists, theatre staff, dental assistants, porters, domestics and administrative staff, and all are identifiable by their name badges which are worn at all times. We have two teams of staff in a 24-hour period. Our day staff start at 7.30am and finish at 8pm. Our night staff start at 7.30pm and finish at 8am. Ross Tilly and Margaret Duncombe is made up of seven bays of beds and individual rooms. The individual rooms are generally used for patients that have been transferred from other hospitals and need to be nursed separately for infection and control purposes. All bays are single sex bays with male and female toilets and shower rooms. There is also a day room with a television and tea and coffee making facilities for patients and visitors of both wards. Once admitted onto the ward, we will record your weight and height and any past and current medical conditions and current medication that you're taking. We will perform a set of observations on your blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen saturations and temperature. Swabs may also be taken at this time if required. You will be required to wear an identity bracelet whilst you're in hospital and members of staff will ask you to confirm your identity frequently, especially before carrying out any treatment or giving you medicines. It is particularly important that we know exactly what medicines you have been or are currently taking so that we can decide on the best treatment for you. Please show any medicines you are taking when you come into the hospital to the nurse, doctor or pharmacist on the ward. The medicines that belong to you will be placed in the locked part of your bedside locker. If your stay in hospital is unexpected and you do not have any toiletries with you, please let a member of staff know as we can provide these. If you need help washing or dressing, please ask one of the nursing staff for assistance. You can keep a small number of day-to-day -day essential items in the locker by your bed. We cannot be responsible for the security of your valuable items, so you may wish to give these to a relative or friend to take home. If you need extra pillows or blankets, just let us know. Breakfast is served between 7.30 and 8am, lunch is midday to 1pm and dinner between 5 and 6pm. You'll be seen by a doctor who will discuss your procedure with you and ask you to sign a consent form giving you permission for surgery. If required, the doctor may take bloods and insert a cannula at this point. You may also be seen by an anaesthetist to discuss which type of anaesthesia you'll be having. You will either have a general anaesthetic where you are put to sleep for your procedure, an axillary arm block where the nerves in your arms are blocked for a pain-free procedure allowing you to remain awake, or under a local anaesthetic where pain relief is injected around the site that is to be operated on. Unless you are having a local anaesthetic, you will be asked to wear support stockings, which can help in reducing the risk of a deep vein thrombosis. If you are worried about your condition or in pain or discomfort, please let the staff on the ward know. If you would like to know more about your treatment, the doctors and nursing staff responsible for your care will be happy to discuss this with you. There may be a wait for you to go to the theatre. Unless you are having a local anaesthetic, you will be required to be nil by mouth. Eating and drinking is not allowed during this time until after your surgery. Please make sure you have removed all jewellery before you leave the ward for your operation. You will be given a hospital gown to wear when you are taken down to theatres. This is to help protect your own clothing and for hygiene reasons. A theatre checklist will be completed before you go in to have your procedure. There is a short walk to theatres. If you have mobility issues, however, we will take you down in a bed or a wheelchair. It can be a bit chilly, so we recommend that you wear a jacket or wrap a blanket around your shoulders. You will be escorted to theatre by one of the nursing team from the ward or by one of the staff from theatres. The theatre staff will need to complete a checklist before your surgery starts and during this time you might have to wear an oxygen mask and have a cannula fitted for intravenous medication. After your procedure, if you've had a general anaesthetic, you will wake up in the theatre's recovery area and will stay there for a short while until you're transferred back onto the ward. Once on the ward, we will regularly check that you're recovering from surgery as expected by monitoring your pain levels and making sure that you are comfortable as possible. 
you'll be encouraged to eat, drink and to mobilise to the toilet. If you've had a general anaesthetic, we recommend that you ask a staff member to accompany you to the toilet for the first time. Doctor's rounds normally start at 8.30 in the morning and are completed by around 9.30. During these rounds, it is decided if patients can be discharged that day or if they require further treatment and to stay overnight. If you are being discharged, this would normally happen around 1pm after lunch and after your documentation, any medication required has been received from pharmacy. You can check with your nurse what time your discharge might be completed. You may be required to return to the hospital for follow-up appointments with our outpatient dressings clinic, MaxFax clinic or hand therapy. These times are normally confirmed after you've been discharged and a member of the admin team will contact you via text message or letter. We know that visits from friends and family are important and can be a benefit to our patients. It is also important though that patients can rest and our staff have time to carry out assessments and give treatment, so our wards have fixed visiting times between 2 and 8pm. Visiting outside of these times can be arranged at the discretion of the ward manager to accommodate long journeys for instance. Other patients may want to rest or sleep during visiting hours, so please be considerate of their wishes. We do have a protected meal times policy to ensure that patients can eat without interruption and do not miss meals, so visiting is not allowed between 12 and 1 and between 5 and 6 p.m. unless you are a patient's carer and will be helping them to eat. For the safety of our patients, it is important that visitors do not come into the hospital if they have been unwell in the past 48 hours, especially with a cold, diarrhoea or vomiting. They must wait 48 hours until they have been clear of symptoms before visiting. In order to reduce the risk of infections, visitors should not sit on our patients' beds and should not bring babies or young children onto the ward. There are a number of facilities available for refreshments at the Queen Victoria. The Spitfire restaurant, where you can purchase hot food, drinks and snacks, is open Monday to Friday, 7.30 to 4pm. Weekends and bank holidays, 7.30 to 3pm. The Hurricane Cafe is open six days a week for sandwiches, snacks and drinks. We have 24 hour vending machines available in the Lancaster Lounge and there is also a garden area with a pond and seating which has wheelchair access and is particularly pleasant on a warm summer's day. Queen Victoria Hospital is a smoke free environment both inside and outside the hospital buildings. If you'd like help to stop smoking please speak to a nurse or doctor. Car parking on site is pay and display and the charges are displayed in the car park and on our hospital website. We are well served by local bus and taxi services to and from East Grinstead train station which connects to London Bridge, London Victoria and East Croydon. More details can be found on the national train inquiries. Patients are expected to make their own arrangements to get to and from the hospital, usually with help from their friends and relatives. Patients on some benefits, for example universal credit, may be entitled to claim back the cost of their travel from our hospital cashier's office. If so, you will need to provide evidence of your entitlement to those benefits. Patient transport services are available to those whose medical conditions mean they cannot use public transport. These services are provided on a countrywide basis depending on where you live. We do hope under the circumstances your stay at the Queen Victoria Hospital has been a positive one. And if you do have the time, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could complete a feedback form.